Hey guys, Golf Nerd here. If you want to see how this turned into this, stick around and I'll walk you through the construction of every step of my new golf studio. Fold it to half and fold that side to half. Then you just fold it in. Should we do it though? It's longer this way than uh -huh. it is wide this way. Right, yeah. So you just take it from this end here. Oh, okay. Then you just go halfway in. Okay. It's like about like there. Okay. Yeah. Is that quite half? Yeah, it's about halfway in. Uh oh. So now you can tarp a load for it. Fold it over again. Actually, I did that wrong. Take that. Sorry, fold it in half again. That's how we do it. Yep. And then fold it over. There you go. And roll it up. Roll it up. Uh -huh. Roll it up. It's like it's on a roll. Or we could fold it if you wanted. Yeah, that's, that's kind of what I was thinking. Okay, but rolling it, it makes it nice and tighter. Well, I mean, if you think it'll work. Yeah. So we just got done moving the turf down here and I got done tearing out my old hitting area. And uh, over the next couple of days, I'm gonna be putting in some electrical outlets and uh, putting down the foam tile and getting the turf ready. And then I'll be building the enclosure, putting up the screen, hanging the projector and, and making all the connections. It's gonna be a couple of days worth of work. Uh, I'm gonna spare you the, the fast forwarded video of me putting the flooring in but I plan on filming some of the enclosure build. Well, today is day two of the sim build. Last night I finished up getting the turf put down and I have to say this NP45 turf from Synthetic Turf International, it's really, really great. I'm really happy with it. It's laid out very flat. Um, it just has really smoothed out just in the few hours since uh, I finished up last night till tonight. So really happy with that. Uh, I've got all my conduit cut and I'm going to be building the enclosure frame next. Uh, so that's what my, that's the part of the project that I'm planning on completing tonight. But uh, just to give you a feel for this material and how well it putts. That was a terrible putt, but it just rolls super true. I'm really, really happy with it. I did have to make one cut around the support column over here and that turned out really well as well. So all things at this point are moving along very, very well, just a little slow, 
So, uh, but it's not a race. I'm just trying to do it right. And uh, we'll see what, what the enclosure build is gonna be like. So I got the frame done. Wife helped me. You definitely need an extra set of hands when you're working on these top members up here. Uh, the build was really good. Um, I did have to adjust some of the corner pieces in order to make sure I got all the right outside dimensions to fit the one piece of fabric that's going to go around the cover. Uh, I eventually knew I was going to have to move this TV, but I went ahead and moved it so it's out of the way of that back corner of the enclosure. This TV is going to be used to present out of GS Pro and the, the Pro package for Mevo Plus. This is going to give you all of your club information while this is going to be the simulator. So that's, uh, that's coming along nicely. Uh, next is we're going to put the fabric surround around the enclosure. The wife's going to help me again, which I very much appreciate. Uh, some of these jobs are just a little bit tricky if you only have one set of hands. So uh, we'll update again shortly. Well, today's day three of the project. As you can see, I got the enclosure finished yesterday. Uh, turned out really great. Uh, the quality of the materials is excellent. I'm really happy with how it turned out. The uh, scope of work for today is I need to run some outlets. Um, I need to reroute the ethernet cable, get the computer set up, put up the projector. And I also need to make a decision on exactly how much ball flight I want and then cut in the uh, the hitting mat into the turf. So those are all the things on the agenda and we'll see how far we can get on day number three. It's not a hundred percent done, but it is very close. There's just a few details I need to do yet. One is I need to decide on whether or not I'm going to cut in just a hitting strip or whether I'm going to cut in the entire mat. I'm still undecided on that. And before I make any cuts, I wanna make sure that I have exactly what I want in mind. So I'm gonna trial it for a while with a full mat and make a decision. I also have a few putting cups that I'm going to be putting into the turf, but I wanna make sure I know exactly where I want them because I have such a large putting surface now that I want to be able to make or take advantage the most of the opportunity to, to practice my putting. The putting turf itself and the hitting mat was all supplied by SimTurf.com. Um, it is all Synthetic Turf International product. The hitting mat, as I covered in an original video, is the EZT Hybrid, which I am really enjoying. Um, you can see some wear on there, but it's very minor. It's just a little bit of discoloring. And if you get... The, the camera actually makes the wear look quite a bit worse than what it does in real life, which is particularly interesting. The putting turf is Synthetic Turf International's NP45, and it rolls fantastic. And if you typically play on municipal courses, the speed of the stimp is going to be much more in line with what you would expect to have on a municipal course. I would estimate it's probably about a nine stimp. The coup de gras is the enclosure and screen. This was supplied by Bullseye Golf. Rick is the owner of the business of Bullseye Golf. He's a passionate indoor simulator golfer that wanted to build a really great product. Uh, he makes these products with the intention of them being used for a commercial activity. The sides and the top of the enclosure are extremely heavy material. I mean, it could easily take a, a shot into this material and it's just, it's gonna wear forever. All of the corner protection is that same really thick material. Um, I don't know if you can get a feel for it, but it's a really heavy, 
heavy material. So there's padding in all four corners. There's uh, padding along the sides, padding down along the bottom. And then at the top, he has a baffle system, which is the same heavy fabric, but with a piece of vinyl attached on the back side. And if you hit a lob wedge into that baffle material at the top, it just drops. It's not going anywhere. The top side posts are covered with just uh, pipe insulation, but so far, given the size of this enclosure, no one's even gotten close to that. This enclosure, the screen measures um, eight foot tall by 14 foot wide. So it's a, it, it got shoehorned into this space. I couldn't have fit any larger of an enclosure, but it's just turned out fantastic. Some of the other details that I have, I had to put in outlets up above the projector that I've mounted is a BenQ TK700 STI. It's a 4K projector and it's actually currently on sale. So if you're considering one, it's about $200 off right now. And Bullseye also sells those if you uh, wanna do a one-stop shop. The other thing about the Bullseye product that I really like is Rick has Velcro attached on all four sides of the screen. In fact, you can see it up on the top. And then he has grommets all the way around. I have every grommet has a bungee cord on it and the bounce back, the ball just rolls back to your feet. It's a uh, three ply premier premium screen. Um, and like I said, the bounce back is negligible. It's just about the perfect pace, so you don't have to go chasing a ball down. It just comes right back to you. The image is fantastic. I'll turn off the lights here in a minute and show you the image. I only have all the lights on right now, so you can see the uh, entire setup. Finally, I've got my gaming PC. I've got a secondary monitor and I'm using that to display the club information from GS Pro. So I've got my Mevo Plus with the Pro package set up and for every shot you can immediately see uh, your club path, club face, just all the relevant information. So if you're working on your swing you can make immediate changes and, and see if you're making a difference or not. All in all, I couldn't be more happy with this setup. The turf's fantastic, the enclosure's great, the space has just turned out really, really well, and it's gonna serve as uh, a great studio for all of my future videos, so I'm really excited to be able to work in this space as well. I'll turn off the lights so you guys can get a, a real feel for the, the quality of the image on Rick's screens. And by the way, Rick's screens are about two-thirds the cost of a Carl's Place screen. And I'm telling you, you're not sacrificing anything in quality. So this is what the enclosure looks like once you get the background lighting under control. The screen, like I said, is just a fantastic image. The BenQ is doing a great job and the screen is just giving so much detail. It is just a really, really awesome image. And I'll pull up some 4K video in just a moment so you guys can see what 4K video looks like on this as well. I am uh, playing GS Pro at 4K on my gaming PC. It's right at the edge of what my computer can handle. I'm using a AMD 6700 XT graphics card with 16 gigs of onboard memory and a Intel i3 12th generation uh, processor. And like I said, it's right at the edge of what this computer can handle. But I'm getting, like right now, this would be 60 frames per second, um, which is providing, you know, a, a very smooth image. 
So, but it's completely, it's almost 100% utilized the graphics card. So it's right at the very edge of its limits and as the courses get more and more demanding, it may not be able to keep up, but for right now, it's handling everything I throw at it. So now I'm gonna bring up some 4K video and I'll show you what that looks like. So this is just some 4K video on YouTube of Alaska. You can just see how amazing the picture is given this projector screen and the and the BenQ projector. It just looks absolutely amazing. I've already told my wife we're going to have to watch some college basketball games down here because this is truly just an immersive experience. It really feels like you could just fall into the screen when you're doing those shots like that. So yeah, 4K on this uh, bullseye golf screen, impact screen, looks just fantastic. So absolutely no complaints at all. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video showing the build of my sim. I'm just really happy with how it turned out. I think it's terrific. I've put links in the description for both Bullseye Golf and SimTurf. These folks are great to deal with. I highly recommend that you reach out to them. They've just got first class products. If you have any questions about my process or about the selections that I made, just reach out in the comment section below. I respond to every comment or question that I receive. Uh, also, if you got any value out of this video, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a like. Uh, that really helps me get my videos out in front of more people, and I just appreciate that. Uh, also, I'd love to have you as a subscriber if you haven't already subscribed to the channel. I'm going to be doing a lot of really cool content in this space, and I'm really excited about what I've got planned for the future. So subscribe. That way you don't miss any of the videos that I'm going to be making. Well, that's it from the Golf Nerd. Hit them long and straight, and I'll see you next time.